everybody, Sarah here at the Big Boss Homestead. Um, Angie over at Doing Things Different has started a zucchini challenge, and it is to share your savory zucchini recipes. So I wanted to show one of our favorites here in the house. Um, I have quite a few that I do. I may do more than one video just to share, but I'll put her link in the description and probably try to put a little card up here at the top. Go check her channel out and check out that challenge, and anybody is welcome to share any kind of recipe you have for a savory zucchini dish. Um, they're getting too many zucchinis and don't know what to do with them all. And a lot of us are like that. So I want to share this one. It's really easy. And this is a really great recipe. It is a pizza casserole made with zucchini, but not in the way that you think. Trust me. You got to watch the recipe to see. So I've got this large zucchini from the garden. Like it was massive. I've already cut it in half. I'm getting ready to peel it. And then I'm going to de-seed it because I need four cups of shredded zucchini. So we're gonna start with that first and then we'll get into the rest of the recipe. Okay, normally I do not peel my zucchinis, but this one sat in the garden for an extra couple days and the skin got a little tough. Uh, that's why it's a larger zucchini to begin with. But I'm just cutting it down in chunks and I'm going to shred it up. You're looking to get four cups of shredded zucchini out of this. If you're using just fresh out the garden, soft little babies, you don't have to peel them or de-seed them or anything. This is just a good way to use up those big ones, too. So I've got my zucchini shredded, and I'm adding half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm just going to massage this into the zucchini. And then I'm going to place this into a colander on the sink, because uh, we want this to drain out all the liquid that's in here. Okay, I'm gonna let it stand in the colander for about 10 minutes and that should get most of that off. And then we're gonna squeeze it really tight and get all the liquid out. Okay, in the meantime, I'm gonna start the rest of the mixture because we're actually building a crust with this um, zucchini. So I'm doing two eggs and I'm gonna whisk these really good. Okay, and then to this, I'm gonna add a half of a cup of Parmesan cheese. You can use fresh or grated. This is a fourth cup measurement. It's because it fits in the fits in the top a little bit better. But a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. And then I have shredded up a bunch of cheese because you need two cups of shredded cheese. So I just put it in the food processor. And I'm just going to add some of that to the crust as well. I'm adding some of that to it. You're dividing it in half. I'm using mozzarella and cheddar cheese. You can use whatever you choose. And I'm just going to kind of mix this around for a second so the cheese doesn't dry out. We've got a few more minutes on the zucchini, and then we'll get that drained and added too. Okay, I apologize, my sink is a mess at the moment, but this side's nice and clean and sterile, and that's good. All I'm going to do now is take the zucchini by handfuls and squeeze it. You'll see all that liquid come out. You want to get all that extra liquid out. So I'm going to do that with all of this, and then each handful I will add back into the mixture over here. Okay, so the zucchini is added back in. I like to kind of fluff it with a fork so it breaks up and it mixes easier. And then just stir it into the cheese and egg mixture. Get it nice and mixed in really well. Okay, I've got a casserole dish. You can use whatever type you want. And I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a light spray of oil just to make sure nothing sticks. I've got my oven preheating to 400 degrees. I'm just gonna give this one more quick stir to make sure it's all nice incorporated. And I'm gonna put this into my dish and we're gonna press it down. This is what actually forms the crust. There is no carbs in this crust whatsoever. Uh, very keto friendly. Just press it all down. 
and coat the bottom. All right, and this goes into a 400 degree oven for 20 minutes. Okay, so I've got some homemade tomato sauce here. This was just made from a can of tomatoes from my garden. You can use store-bought, it does not matter. But you want a good quart size jar or large jar of tomato sauce, um, whatever flavor you prefer. And you can get very creative at this point because I cooked my ground beef separate um, and then I cooked my sauce separate because obviously I had to cook this for a little while. But you can get very creative. You can saute onions and peppers. You can put in mushrooms, whatever you choose. The flavors that you're putting in this are your favorite like pizza flavors. My family just likes pepperoni. So I don't add a whole lot of extra to it unless I make one for myself and my daughter. But I'm gonna add in some cooked ground beef. You want about a pound of ground beef, kind of an even ratio between sauce and ground beef. And I'm just gonna mix that in really well. And you can make it meatier if you want to. You can use Italian sausage. I mean, just whatever you want. It's all up to you. I'm gonna add a little more meat to that so that it's not so saucy. Okay, this is what the crust looks like after the first 20 minutes. You can see the edges are starting to brown and the cheese is all melted and it's kind of bubbly sounding. Probably can't really hear that. But at this point, all we're gonna do is take our meat and tomato sauce mixture and put that over the top. Okay, I'm gonna spread this evenly so that it's nice and coated. And again, add whatever you want to this. There is all sorts of options. Your favorite pizza flavors, just add it in there. It's really good just the way that it is. So it's totally up to you guys. I have a little bit of crumbled bacon left over from another recipe I was doing. So I'm gonna add that just for a little extra flavor. And I'm just gonna top it with some cheese. The amount of cheese that you use is totally up to you. Okay, I'm so sorry about that. My camera somehow flipped, so it's not as vibrant looking as it is now. But you can see I already started to put some cheese on and I'm just gonna layer some pepperoni because we all like pepperoni on pizzas. Just because I have some extra shredded cheese in the fridge, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit more over the pepperoni to seal it on. You can also add more Parmesan cheese to this if you like that or you can add it afterwards, whatever your choice is. Um, this is gonna bake in the oven for another 20 minutes. And once it's done, I'm gonna let it cool for about 10 to 15 minutes just to make sure that it's not too bubbly hot. But I'll show you the finished product when it is done. There it is, fresh out the oven. And I told you I like to let it sit because it is bubbly hot. Um, it smells absolutely amazing, it smells like a pizza. So I'm gonna let it cool for a little bit and then I'll cut a piece and show you that part. Okay, it's cold and I've cut it. The cheese kind of went wonky, but that's okay. And I will just scoop out a big piece. But you can see it kind of has like this crust on the bottom with all the goodness on top. It's good stuff. So that's it. The zucchini lasagna bake. Alright guys, so like I said, play up with the flavors that you want that you would do on a pizza. It tastes just like a pizza and just because that's eggs on the bottom, it does not taste like a eggy crust. It almost tastes like eating a regular pizza. It's really good because like I said, low carb, keto friendly, 
all that good stuff. We really enjoy it. I hope you guys do too. So thank you guys for stopping by and go check out Angie's channel. And if you want to join, you're more than welcome to join the collaboration as well. Just savory zucchini recipes. That's all she needs. Um, so yeah, I had fun doing this and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.